or in looking for occupation, the more I find money. And I don't understand, so I'm going deeper and deeper. And then in 2010, I'm getting into a very interesting story about how the Israeli government and Israeli army was selling a new tear gas canister into the government of police, uh, Singapore, of, uh, the police and government of the Singapore people. They're selling tear gas canister to fight their protest in their country. And during this time, I'm looking and I'm saying, Israel is selling tear gas canister? So I'm going to, into the website of the sec Minister of, of Security in Israel, and I find out they're saying that Israel just concluded a deal with the Singapore government of selling the best tear gas canister ever produced and tried by the Israeli army. And it was he mentioned there a few lines later that this tear gas canister was proven to be the most deadliest ever. And I'm going back and I'm saying, wait, try the tear gas canister. Who would be agreed to be tried? And then I understand. They're trying the weapons every day. Not in labs, down there on the field. They're trying their weapons. I was trying their weapons in Bilin, in Yalin, in Falkadum, in Abi Salah, in, Be in Bethlehem, in Hebron. El Halil, South Manchevon, in East Jerusalem. We're trying the weapons every day and then we're selling it outside. And I couldn't believe the things that I'm seeing, so I'm going deeper and deeper. And then I realized that, you remember this guy, the young guy that threw stones in the beginning of the protest? They were not Palestinians. They were actually an undercover unit of the Israeli army looking like me, Arab Jews, disguised as Palestinian inside these villages, starting a riot, starting something, so the Israeli army will have a good excuse to start shooting the place up and testing the weapons. And the more I go, the more I can understand. Is this for real? How long is it going through? How much money are we making? I'm going in and in, and then I discovered in the last 30, 40 years, and this is a very, very partial list, this is the dictatorships and regime that the Israeli government and the Israeli army is trading weapons with, trading knowledge with, trading technology or training their soldier by themselves in those countries. In the last 40 years, we were involved in the worst dictatorships and regimes in the world. And we were making a killing out of it, literally. We are making so much money out of it. And then I understand. This is not an occupation, it's a laboratory. Sometimes as a soldier, I would infuse poison to Palestinians. Sometimes as a protester, I will run away with Palestinians and be in a lab rat. But all this time, we're trying weapons out and selling them out there in the source of everything. It's not a religion, it's not the land. There's a lot, a lot of money. And I understand that I'm standing in the wrong place. And I'm moving to New York City from Jerusalem. It's a big change. And I'm standing in New York City in the last three years. I'm researching the relationship between our army and your army. Our government and your government. And all the money that flows in the middle. Now I'm going to do a cut just for a second and do a different ending than usual. We're doing it in the last few, pro uh, the few last lectures. And I want to try it now. Two and a half months ago. We were on the Maryland Highway on our way to do this kind of lectures in Washington, D.C. And we were on our way, we crashed our car in the middle of the Maryland Highway and we were stuck in the middle of the highway. People were driving next to us and we did something we don't really like to do, we called the police. And the police came very fast, very efficient. The Maryland officer police came and took us out of the highway. Tall car came and took mine and another friend with our car to the lot. And I got a ride along with the Maryland officer police. And for 10 minutes, we're driving silently, and I have no idea it's going to change my life, this ride. And we're driving quietly, and then the guy is looking at me, the officer of the Maryland police is looking at me and saying, so, where are you from? And I'm saying, oh, I'm, I'm, from, Pal I'm from Israel. I'm from Israel. And the officer is saying, oh, man. You guys are bad asses. You know how to silence the one that oppose you. You know how to calm them down. Nobody disobey you. You guys are the best. And I'm saying, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't think you really know a, a lot about the Israeli army. So, you know, never mind. He said, oh, no, no. I just came back from there. I'm saying, what, is a tourist? I said, no, with the Maryland police. We just came back from training with your military and your police. I'm saying, what? I said, Oh yeah, you know all of our police here in the U.S. is going to a few weeks to Israel and trained with your army and your police. 
And I'm still starting investigating more and more, getting more information out there. And then before I leave the house, I, before I leave the car, I'm sorry, the, his car to the lot, I'm thinking, is there a chance you know Shlomo Ifrati? My father, the head of investigation of the Jerusalem police? And the guy takes out his cell phone and flipping pictures. And he got a picture hugged with my dad in the middle of the night in Washington, D.C. And I'm just blown away. I'm going out of the car and I'm calling my dad in Jerusalem. And I'm saying, Dad, what the hell? And my dad is telling me, oh, come on, Irani, don't be naive. You know NYPD got an office in Tel Aviv, right? You know we got an office in New York, right? Come on, we're working together to protect you. And then I understand, it wasn't the first time, but that was my closure. For years, we're doing this kind of lectures, very different kind of lectures, and talking with communities here in the US, telling them that all they need to do is take care of their community and it's gonna be fine. Every one of us will take care of our community, but you should know that, you know, what's going on in Palestine is a humanitarian crisis. And I'm going around and I'm telling them, I learned something growing up. All of us wanna be on the right place at the right time when history is knocking on the door. And history is knocking right now, really loud in Palestine. And all of you need to be on the right side on this humanitarian case, but not this time. If you don't care about Palestinians after this lecture, I don't care. And if you don't care about us, Israel is asking for your help to stop the apartheid regime in Israel. I'm fine with that also. But you guys should know, you are next in line. The next one who will die from a tear gas canister into his chest will be in Zuccotti Park, will be in Denver, will be in Oakland, in San Francisco. It is happening here already. It's happening to different people, to people of color, to immigrants in this country. It's already happening. You guys are next in line. The next one who will die out of brutality of the police will be one of your sons or your daughters in a protest because they're training together. Your police training with our army. Our army is training them how to take care of the enemy because Palestinians are our enemy. But when they're coming back, you are their enemy. All this time when we are taking care of our communities, I was taking care of mine and you were trying to take care of yours. They, the government, the police, they were organizing together globally to oppress us. We need to start organizing globally to resist them. And that start in Palestine right now. Stopping the training there, we'll stop it here. This is why I joined in 2005 the civil society call of the Palestinians for boycott, divestment, and sanction on the state of Israel. Taking it out from the source, non-violently from the money, taking the money out of the equation. How many lives can we save? Everybody knows the apartheid regime will stop. The question is how fast and how many people is gonna die there and here until it will happen. We need to start organizing globally to resist them. I hope you'll join us on the call of BDS and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.